Hi there, everyone. Fabian here. Today, you will see how we will take this box of Cheez-Its and use a local language model to analyze and reason over it. Taking a picture of the box with my iPhone and ear dropping it on my MacBook. We will then pass the image as a base 64 string to the model and have it come back based on my prompt with details of what it extrapolated. But first, we're going to break down this C sharp code step by step, answering two key questions. What's happening at each step? Because as you know, there are many ways that you can code a solution. So we're going to also answer why we're doing it this way. This code demonstrates how to analyze an image using Llama 3.2 Vision 90B model, all running locally on this MacBook, private and offline. It's also worth noting, this is part one of two. In part two, we'll use the output, turn it into a class, and pass it into a reason model for insights. But for now, let's dive in. Let's move this down here. There we go. Can't pronounce the top one, but um, as you can see in this example, it is um, what the image looks like inside the folder here that we have inside our, um, our program. Note that we have one from a local craft brewery right up the road from what that I took yesterday. Let's move this up a little bit higher now and click on this. Um, note also that we have a text file where the result of what the model saw and return based on my prompt. Move this down. Close that and go to 43. All righty. We also have the image of the cheese it box that you saw earlier, but no output yet. We're actually going to do that one together. Now, before we actually get to the code review, let's actually kick this off because I know running locally, it's going to take like around a few minutes to go to, to go. So clear .NET run it's out of the way and let's tee this up. So let's start with lines 9 through 13. Let's move this up a little bit more as well, too. Um, we can um, see that we define our variables and the URI endpoint for our local Olama server and for the model that we're going to be using. Why is this important? These define where the program will send the image and what the model and what model will use. Think about them like an address and service for the operation. Now let's move to line 15 through 24. The code sets the path for the input image and also the output response file. The key thing here is that the code ensures that the, act, the image actually exists in the folder before it kicks it off. On line 27 through 35, we read the image file and encode it into base64 format. Why? Models like Llama 3.2 Vision require the image be in a specific format. Base64 turns the image into a string that the program can send to the JSON payload. The using statements just ensure for proper cleanup, whether it's error or not, in case anything goes wrong. All right, 37. Yep, yeah. So let's look at 37 through 46. Here we construct the JSON payload to send it to the model. What's inside the payload? The model ID, the request prompt, and the encoding image. Think about this like an instruction sheet for the model, telling it what to do with the image and how to respond. The solution makes um, for a flexible solution because then you can modify the prompt to get different types of analysis or use console.readline to make it a little bit more dynamic. 46 to 58, there we go. In 46 to 58, we send a JSON payload um, you know, to, with a HTTP resp um, respond request, I'm sorry. Um, the reason why we actually set the timeout as well is because I got an error before. Um, so just ensuring that it's set to five minutes because it's running locally helps me avoid that. Now, the heart of the program is in actually line 60 to 104. The program processes the chunk response from the model in real time, appending each chunk to build the final output. Why do we have chunk processing? Large models often send their response in, pa in, um, in parts, and this approach ensures that we don't lose any data. The final response is written as a text file that we can access, as you saw before. And just to wrap up, um, what we have in line 106 to 23, this is just try-catch blocks just to make the program a little bit more user-friendly and help with troubleshooting, which I had a little bit before. So it looks like the cheese it response came back. We can actually see it here. I'll move this up for you. It says the image um, is a photograph of a side panel of a cheese it box featuring nutritional information and ingredients. And it actually goes through the ingredients. Let me take a look at it here. Yes, pretty good. 
you know, shows the 150 calories per serving, the uh, eight grams saturated fat, so on and so forth. And it also gives it, like we said, in bullet form and also in narrative format, something that we actually told it to do inside the prompt right here. Give me a summary and break down the detail of the image using narrative format and bullet points. So thank you for the walkthrough. If you're excited about this, um, the AI workflow, stay tuned for part two. Um, that's where I'm actually going to take it and put use a semantic kernel as the program and turn this into a class file and then send input into the um, into the class, have it run over and then give me information back. And I'm actually going to be using DeepSeq R1 for that part of it as well. Um, you know, just a little bit of reason over it. The key here is that I want to show you that you can actually use multiple models on a local machine one tuned for one, one tuned for another. Like, you know, I don't want to, I don't think even think I can use DeepSeq R1 to, um, to manage an image. So I'm going to use the uh, Llama um, Vision for the image and also the Deep um, DeepSeq for the reasoning. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it.